Another important concept in recognizing that free radical oxidation plays such a dramatic role in the various neurodegenerative diseases is the understanding that the brain in these patients seems to accumulate what are called heavy metals and other metals too. Uh, things like iron, mercury, lead, cadmium, and arsenic are seen in higher concentrations in patients with various neurodegenerative problems. Iron accumulation is profound in diseases like Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease. It is for this reason that we've embarked on a treatment protocol utilizing what's called EDTA chelation, or standard chelation therapy, in patients with these conditions. The, un the understanding, the mechanism behind this work, is that by reducing those catalysts, or those chemicals, the heavy metals, which enhance free radical production, we can reduce the rate of brain degeneration. So EDTA chelation therapy, more than just being useful in cardiovascular disease and peripheral vascular disease, certainly plays an important role in neurodegenerative diseases. I believe over the next five to ten years uh, that the concepts which are currently being published in the peer-reviewed neurology journals dealing with the fact that the brains accumulate heavy metals will spread to the general public and chelation therapy will play a much more important role in limiting the free radical oxidative state of these patients and therefore slowing down the rate of progression of their diseases. There are two uh, enzymatic uh, types of pathways that exist in nature that are utilized by the brain for detoxification. These include something called transsulfation and transmethylation. What that simply means is that a sulfur group or a methyl group that are donated by amino acids are attached to a toxin which allows for the body to successfully excrete this toxin through the liver or through the kidneys. The brain also uses these two enzymatic steps transmethylation and transsulfation. There are a variety of amino acids and other substances that are effective to detoxify the brain. For instance, there's a substance called S-adenosyl methionine. This is a ubiquitous uh, substance which is a modification of an amino acid which is found in the brain that plays a crucial step in detoxification for the brain. In fact, there are certain genetic disorders in which people have a deficiency in the manufacture of this compound, S-adenosyl methionine, and have a variety of neurological symptoms as well as cardiovascular symptoms. Well, S-adenosyl methionine actually is a substance which is widely used in Europe now for a variety of, of neurological conditions, including depression. It's now also being effectively studied in, in children with ADHD, and is also very, very effective in osteoporosis. So one, one substance that uh, people who are interested in brain detoxification could look at is this compound called S-adenosyl methionine. Colon health is very important to our overall general health and well-being. The reason being is that for optimum health is that for every meal we eat, we should have an elimination. We should have a bowel movement. For every bowel movement that we don't have, it accumulates around the colon walls and it hardens and can get rubbery. Our colon is where absorption takes place of our nutrients. It's part of our digestive system as well as where we eliminate and evacuate waste from. When our colons are blocked, with rubbery hardened waste will be absorbing the waste products rather than the nutrients. The gastrointestinal system is a major immune system for the body. It's involved in, in really detoxifying and, and cleansing out substances before they reach the bloodstream. A classic example of a relationship between a gastrointestinal disorder and a neurological problem are in patients with liver disease. Patients with liver disease that eat high protein diets develop uh, what's called hepatic encephalopathy, which is a neurological illness characterized by confusion, lethargy, and seizures. The reason why these, these people have neurological problems is because their liver is no longer able to successfully cleanse out ammonia from the bloodstream. So when they eat a high-protein diet, this gets broken down to ammonia, and that ammonia 
normally is effectively metabolized by the liver. And when the liver is failing, this ammonia builds up and is highly toxic to the brain. When the body becomes so full of poisons, it's difficult to f for the body to filter them out. What happens is that the pathway of toxicity is that first the poisons reach the tonsils and the tonsils are overworked and they get full of toxicity and the thymus gland takes over from there and when the thymus gland is overloaded and full of toxicity and can't filter anymore it backs up into the lymph system and then the lymph system gets full and that's our whole immune system uh, water is essential to good health and good colon health. Water is something that's very hydrating. It hydrates our skin, it hydrates our bowels. Most models that I've known and talked to swear by water that it keeps you young and keeps you from getting lines and wrinkles at a young age. Also for the rest of our body, it's very, very hydrating to our organs, especially the colon, so we can eliminate properly. Of course, one of the common ways of manipulating the diet is to fast. And fasting does help cleanse the body. Um, a true fast is where you consume nothing but tolerated water for several days. However, most people do much better with a modified fast where they drink some type of juice. You can use a vegetable broth or some people even use a, a fruit broth when they detoxify with fasting. One caution about fasting, however, is if you are severely allergic to foods, you tend to be addicted to the foods to which you're allergic. And when you start a fast, you can have some fairly acute withdrawal symptoms. And so fasting should be accomplished with caution, uh, perhaps with the, the, the help of a physician. I'd like to talk a little bit about fasting and colon cleansing. A lot of people do juice fasts and water fasts. And totally ignore the fact that they need to eliminate the waste material that's accumulated in the colon. The waste material winds up there from fasting and if we don't get rid of it and flush it out, it begins to reabsorb back into the system and it defeats the whole purpose of doing a fast. Today, if you mention juicing to the average American, at least now they understand that it's something that is valuable for their health. Whether it's carrots, watermelons, lemons, or dark green vegetables is one of the first stages for helping to rebalance the system. You're allowing vitamins, minerals, phytoestrogens, phytochemicals, nutrients of all types that are naturally occurring in the fruits and vegetables to be brought into our body in concentrated amounts. Here's a recipe for a great intestinal cleanser juice drink, which would be eight ounces of watermelon, juice of a lemon, a whole lime, a grapefruit, and a one-inch piece of ginger. Apple juice is a real good detoxifier. This will help clean out parts of the body. Grape juice, black cherry juice, real good detoxifiers. <clears throat> or we can do with different salads. Dandelion, dandelion is an excellent detoxifier for the blood. There are various different herbs that we can use, like milk thistle, red clover, silymerian, which is milk thistle, the Esiac formula, which talks about the four different herbs that we can use for cancer, can also be used as a detoxifier. And I highly recommend people going on just as a preventive me measurement at least once a year for 30 day, 30 to 45 days on detoxifying, particularly the kidney, the liver, and the blood. If we've had any alcohol dependency or drug dependency, this absolutely destroys the liver and is stored again in a cellular level. So again, we need to detoxify, we need to pull this out. I see a lot of people that come into me for colonics that are so hard and crusty and dry inside that nothing comes out in the colonics. So I generally recommend definitely a diet rich and high in fiber and low in all these other foods that are not healthy for us. Um, psyllium can also help in some people. It's not good for everybody, but those who can take it, it's wonderful. 
it helps to moisturize the impacted fecal material so your body can pass the matter through the colon. And in conjunction with the colonic, we get a much deeper cleaning. Bentonite clay is something that's very good to do for detoxification also. What it is is it's volcanic ash. And what it does is it helps to pull mucus and putrefied materials off the sides of the colon walls. For people that have eaten toxic food and are experiencing diarrhea and cramping, it's good to take six charcoal capsules and that will eliminate the cramping, the diarrhea, and the gas. Uh, charcoal is very porous and it can absorb up to 80 times its own weight of a toxin. Um, if, for example, if you have some kind of a cut, uh, if you put a little charcoal powder on the Band-Aid over the cut, it will help to detoxify whatever's in the cut. In general, our culture has been showered with the idea that if you have a symptom, you should take a medicine. In fact, in general, doctors feel that unless you give a prescription, you're kind of practicing wimpy medicine. Strong doctors prescribe strong medicine, and wimpy doctors prescribe what we call nutrients, or things that are not considered to be terribly strong. Well, of course, they're not strong in the sense that they don't have as much tendency to kill you. Uh, and indeed, they have much less tendency to overburden your system. The, the, the human body's tolerance for familiar molecules is great. That's why it's very hard to find significant documentation of the toxicity of most of the things that we call nutrients or accessory nutritional factors or foods. In natural medicine, in naturopathic medicine, we may often look at some of the things that we call diseases in Western medicine as the body's attempt to improve, improve its health. When we start releasing toxins through the skin, we start releasing mucus and toxins through the sinuses. We call that an infection or we call it a skin rash and we'll lay, you know, we'll throw cortisone on it or we'll take an antibiotic to reduce the congestion in the sinuses. However, really it, it, what I see in my practice is if I put people on a detoxifying diet, which is first to get them off of some of the common substances that are everyday irritants, what I call the snacks, S-N-A-C-C-S, -C -C stands for sugar, nicotine, alcohol, caffeine and chemicals in foods. So my first step with people is to take them uh, f off of the substances that they're using most often, and ideal, uh, ideally all of those uh, substances that we have in foods that really offer most of the foods that have those snacks in them don't really have much nutrition, but they have a lot of toxins or th substances that our body has to deal with that aren't really helpful to us. When it comes to detoxification, cleansing, and rebuilding, one of the things many people do is they start looking for other places to buy their food. Now, all the people you see here have gone through cleansing programs. We're at a very busy, busy intersection, very noisy intersection in New York City, 72nd Street and Broadway, where the Outdoor Farmers Market now provides hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers with fresh, natural produce, much of it organic, free of pesticides and herbicides. Now, if you look at some of the produce here, from this wonderful dill, a lot different than buying it in a jar, to the delicious fresh onions, which are so good for parasites, lowering blood pressure. Uh, we have white onions and radishes. All this is in the cruciferous family, meaning it, the phytochemicals help eliminate many of the bacteria in our body, cancer cells, and viruses that lead to disease. I mentioned in the introduction that if you ask what are the three, three leading causes of death in America, people would say heart disease, cancer, and either infectious disease or diabetes. That would be correct, but what is the cause of heart disease, cancer, infectious disease, diabetes, AIDS? It is frequently due to defects in our immune system because an overburden of toxicity. Well, if you're eating processed foods, if you're going to the supermarket, never buying anything fresh, if it's always boxed, canned, uh, and processed, then you're only going to put in things that are denatured. If you listen to Dr. Ibrahim Malik, if you listen to any of these individuals, they're going to tell you and show you 
that the things that made a difference is when they gave up the processed foods and got back to live foods, raw foods, right? You see a difference. Now most of their shopping is done at a place like an outdoor farmer's market. And these are in every city in America. The type of food that really you should eat and that is a positive thing to do to help you detoxify is eating foods that are, quote, organic. Now, what do I mean by organic? Two things. One is that there are no added pesticides or hormones or chemicals or any excessive products that are uh, sprayed on these vegetables or given to cattle or given to poultry uh, during the processing. And when we have vegetables or fruit or any kind of poultry or meat when, when, that's grown commercially, uh, the problem is we're not just getting the uh, food, we're also getting these pesticides uh, that are in the foods as well as when they uh, feed cattle, they give them hormones and antibiotics and they eat pesticide ridden grain. And it, these are all the extra things and these are where all the toxins are coming from. The things that we should eat for optimum colon health are a lot of leafy green vegetables, fresh fruit in moderation. There again, if we eat too much fruit, it can also set the flora off balance, so the flora then won't do its job fighting off viruses and colds and things like that. On any detox program I lead, one of the first things I do is get people off all gluten, like wheat, oats. And the reason for that is so many people have allergic reactions. It sets up chronic uh, fatigue. Not chronic fatigue syndrome, but after you eat wheat, you generally get a brain fatigue. So you feel like you're tired, you want to take a nap. Well, think of the people that are always having, like, oh, a sandwich for lunch, bread for breakfast, or a bagel for breakfast, a pasta for dinner. It's all wheat. Now, you've all known what happens when you give up wheat for a week, right? You go through some headaches, some fatigue, withdrawal, your body goes to something like a healing crisis, but then you come up on the other end of that with more energy than what you've had in a long time, right? Suddenly, energy you never knew you were capable of experiencing, you now can experience, you can now have. So I want you to see what it's like to get off dairy for a week, sugar for a week, all wheat in all forms for a week, all beef for a week, all, all chicken for a week and see if you don't see an enormous difference. Though the first couple of days, you may go through a little fatigue, withdrawal symptoms, but I'll show you how you can take niacin, vitamin C, vitamin B6, aloe vera, uh, quercetin, pycnogenol, uh, the nutrients that can help us detoxify without gross harmful effects, like bifidus bacteria, uh, the, uh, the polysaccharides in the intestine, uh, the psyllium, the garlic, all this helps reduce our withdrawal effects. There are a variety of fats that we ingest in our diet. There are saturated fats and there are unsaturated fats. Clearly saturated fats are, are injurious and harmful to the brain. The reason why they're harmful to the brain is for several reasons. One is that saturated fats reduce the fluidity of cell membranes. As we mentioned earlier before, cell membranes are the receptors that respond to neurotransmitters and other brain chemicals to produce a desired effect within the brain. When a cell membrane, which is chiefly composed of various lipids and fat materials, loses its fluidity, it becomes less able to modify itself and produce its desired effect when a neurotransmitter binds to its receptor. Well, how does one affect fluidity of these cell membranes? We now know that the composition of our diets, and specifically the composition of the lipids in our diets, whether we eat saturated fats or unsaturated fats, actually changes the lipid composition of our cell membranes. When a person has a high saturated diet, this actually changes the fluidity of the cell membranes within neurons, and it makes neurotransmitters less likely to be responsive in their interaction with the cell membrane receptor. So another beneficial uh, way of improving uh, the brain's functioning and optimizing brain wellness as well as detoxifying the brain is by looking at a person's composition of fat in their diet. Whole grain products such as whole wheat, brown rice, millet, quinoa, beans, things in their most whole state 
rather than denatured, unfibrous foods. So in the process of looking at a step-by-step -step approach, number one is to eliminate any common abusive substance, as sugar, nicotine, alcohol, caffeine, or chemicals. Number two, look at any food that you're maybe using too much of or abusing, and particularly cow's milk and milk products and wheat. And take a break from these. Increase the amount of fruits and vegetables in your diet and drink good water up to six to ten glasses a day, ideally away from your meals, two or three glasses when you wake up in the morning and two, two glasses half an hour to an hour before lunch and dinner and maybe one or two glasses in the evening. You're going to chew your food well, you're going to take time and eat, and you're going to eat very little at night. After dinner, should be, that should be the end of your eating. You can have some tea. If you're hungry, maybe have an apple or a piece of fruit and drink some water. And the idea of, of having a 12 to 14 hour period between what you eat at night allows your body to digest and assimilate everything and that will reduce greatly the amount of toxicity that we generate. Avoiding white flour products, especially pasta, which everybody's on a craze about in our country right now. Pasta is the ultimate food. To me, it's the worst thing you can put in your body. There's no fiber in it to help it sweep through the colon. You might as well just open your mouth up and pour cement down your throat. That's what happens in your colon. It's very, very constipating. Things don't move through. It has no nutritional value, and it's very detrimental to the intestinal flora. When we're also low in some of the protective nutrients, vitamin E, vitamin C, beta carotene, selenium, and zinc, which are the commonly known antioxidant nutrients, then these substances can cause more irritation and affect cells. And the most sensitive cells, the T cells, the B cells, and, and some of the other cells that release immunoactive substances, these are more, possibly more damaged from the irritating molecules, just as generally cell membranes that offer, when a cell membrane is intact with the proper amino acid, fatty acid uh, balance, it's much more uh, protective or has better defense against viruses getting into the cells and dividing and then spreading throughout our body by, by using our cell mechanisms to replicate themselves. And if we maintain the proper antioxidants and avoid toxins, I mean the key is to minimize toxins in our everyday life with the best knowledge that we have and to take support of nutrients that will help protect us from the toxins that we do generate, because you all generate toxins on a day-to-day -day basis. There are some substances that the body uses in the detoxification process which are quite valuable for getting rid of tox toxins from the body. And again, I'm talking not just about toxins that come from the outside, but toxins that come from the inside, that is generated by our own chemistry. Actually, much of the chemistry that's devoted to these two compartments, inside and outside toxins, overlaps a lot. So the chemistry is more or less the same. Sulfate in the diet, for example, glycine, an amino acid, reduced glutathione is one of the major carriers of things that we don't want in our body. And it's very important to remember that this process of getting rid of things is not, as many people would imagine, just a matter of sort of smashing it up to take it out of the body, cutting up the molecules in little pieces. It is a synthetic process in which the bad chemicals are joined with a carrier that the body provides, such as the ones I just mentioned, sulfate, glycine, reduced glutathione, and this carrier ushers the toxin out of the body. In certain instances, the carrier is allowed to come back and take another load, but if the if the toxin is an outside chemical, like lead or cadmium or mercury or certain kinds of pesticides and so on that, that, that are not part of the body's chemistry and are not part of the body's vocabulary, really, then the reduced glutathione has to go, go to the dump and stay there. So it's as if you have a dump truck full of trash. The dump truck goes to the dump, and the dump truck stays there with the trash. It's a very expensive operation if you view it th from that perspective. There are many nutrients that help protect our body from damaging and irritating substances that are called free radicals. 
free radicals are basically unstable molecules that are produced from the process of toxicity and detoxification. They can be generated from regular exercise, from exposure to smoke and smog and, and uh, car exhaust, uh, paint fumes, uh, outgassing carpets, freshly painted rooms. Um, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of substances that we may be exposed to in our daily uh, activities. By taking uh, and utilizing additional vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, uh, vitamin A and beta carotene, trace minerals, selenium, and also zinc, and then certain amino acids like L-cysteine, uh, which helps to form glutathione peroxidase and catalase, which are enzymes that are important in detoxifying chemicals. When we have adequate amounts of these substances, we're more able to run and keep current our detoxification processes, and then we're less likely to have some of the problems of toxicity. Picogenol is a highly potent uh, antioxidant, which is useful in a variety of neurological problems. We mentioned before lipoic acid, N-acetylcysteine, vitamin E, Tocotrienols are important, which are uh, a, a, a deri uh, derivation of vitamin E. Uh, coenzyme Q10 is also a very important antioxidant. So a trace mineral is a very, very key factor. I find, again, I'm not going to get this in my food, so I need to go after a, a supplement, particular supplement. And my choice is your crystalloid trace minerals as opposed to your colloidal trace minerals because of the factor that they are truly organic and they will actually penetrate on a, on a cellular level 100%. The other factor that I find is that your various different greens, like wheatgrass, is a good detoxifier, spirulina, organic spirulina, your Hawaiian blue-green algae, your chlorella, all these various different greens, this is what I combine with my daily drink, and I also use, by the way, organic apple juice, because apple juice is also a detoxifier. So as I'm building up my immune system, I'm also detoxifying the body, which is very, very important. Another herb that I find that is extremely important, very beneficial, is garlic particularly the aged garlic. I will incorporate that you know, after my, my main meal, after lunch or dinner. And while I'm taking the garlic in and ingesting it, even though it's a food herb, and I do it on a daily basis, that is also going to help eliminate the parasites. It's going to help slow down the arthritic problems and also lower the blood pressure. So here's a point while I am detoxifying and I'm building up my immune system, I'm doing basically two things in one, which at the end result is that we have a strong immune system, We've been able to detoxify. We don't have to be carrying around these toxins, which create a burden on us, I really believe, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Natural substances that have the ability for detoxification. Uh, these substances include a compound called S-adenosyl methionine, the amino acids taurine, the supplement folic acid, which is very, very beneficial in a variety of neurological as well as cardiovascular diseases. And there are a variety of other substances. I've actually found that homeopathic detoxification remedies uh, are effective in a variety of neurological problems as well. And the homeopathic remedy used will depend on what the exposure is. For example, CAD itself is very effective for um, helping after you've had an x-ray. People who've never felt well since they were x-rayed will do much better if they take a cadmium sulfatum uh, homeopathic remedy. Uh, for food poisoning, arsenicum album is very helpful. Uh, to detoxify after an insect sting, apis is a very effective remedy. Hi. Well, of course, one of the most important things when it comes to detoxifying is to learn how to exercise. It's not realistic that you're going to be able to cleanse all the debris, all the toxins from your gastrointestinal system, from the fat accumulation. Think of, think of all the saturated fats and the animal proteins you've consumed. The toxins from that lodge in the fat. So by exercising aerobically all the muscles of the body, not just, not just the legs or the lungs, but the arms, the chest, the back, the latinimus, all these muscles get exercised. The abdominals, the thighs. When you start exercising every muscle group, you burn intramuscular fat. 
That means that you have less percentage of body fat, hence less toxins. You have more lean muscle tissue, hence you're stronger. Now, if you do it right, you're going to be a lot healthier in about six months to a year, year and a half. Don't expect a miracle overnight uh, uh, change. It won't happen. I'm going to try to take you through the process and show you about power walking and, and different exercises that can facilitate the cleansing process. Keep in mind, no two people are at the same level in their conditioning. So you have to make sure you have no underlying physiopathology. You have no underlying hypertension, coronary heart disease, clogged arteries. So if you have had any history in your family of heart disease, um, if you are overweight, then make sure you get a proper physical examination before you start this process. And also, I'm out in the sun. Today, it's 95 degrees. I'm down in Florida at my ranch down here. This is the track that I train on. And I don't go out after about 10 o'clock in the morning. Don't be training in real hot weather. But sweating is good. In fact, a lot of the detoxes around the world, a substantial part of the detox is sweating. Sauna therapy, steam bath therapy, even dry heat therapy. Uh, the skin is, is the largest excretory organ in the body. And there are several things that you can do that are simple but will help expedite the removal of toxins from your body through the skin. Uh, something that you can do is, some, is uh, called dry skin brushing. What you do is get a brush with natural fibers and you go in circular motions starting from the uh, proximal or uh, shoulder region down the arm same thing in the trunk, proximally and then distally, circular movements from the legs down to the ankles. All these will help, these movements will help remove from the skin, the surface from the skin, uh, toxins that have built up over time. Uh, another very uh, safe and important way of mobilizing toxins is saunas, low dry heat saunas, specifically really mobilize toxins that are soluble in the fat. Uh, again, pesticides that are very prevalent in the uh, food that we eat are land up, end up in the fat, and are very difficult to detoxify over time. The advantage of a low, dr a dry heat sauna is that these pesticides, the heat from the from the pesticide, the heat from the sauna drives the pesticides out of the fat, and that's uh, very safe and can be very effective to do. Um, if you have any kind of cardiac or uh, pulmonary problems, it should be done. Uh, or you should be cleared by your physician before doing something like this. Something else that can be done at home that's very easy and safe to do are alternating hot and cold water. When you take a shower, uh, it'll, it'll definitely wake you up. You can start with uh, warm water and then turn the shower, all the warm water off, and just have cold water. And do that for a few seconds. And move in your shower in circular moments so your whole, whole body gets covered. Then turn back to the warm water. Cold, warm, cold, warm. What this does basically, is that it opens and closes the pores of the skin, which allows the toxins to escape from the body. And this can be very effective, and certainly it can wake you up and, and be very stimulating as well. The therapeutic bath that Dr. Parcells developed to detoxify from the effects of radiation, very simple. It's a pound of sea salt and a pound of baking soda added to a tub of very hot water stay in the tub until the water cools. And the principle here is that the cool water will draw from the overheated body and will draw all the toxins out of the body. It's very simple and it really works. She worked on these therapeutic baths for many, many years. And here's another one. Now this relates to general muscle aches and pains, feeling ourselves going into uh, a, a period of sickness feeling ourselves becoming ill, whether from a cold, a flu, uh, or any other kind of uh, ill feeling that we might have. It's two cups of apple cider vinegar added to a tub of hot water. And the same thing here. Stay in the hot water until the water cools, and the water, the cool water, will draw from the overheated body, draw the toxins out of the body. Uh, these are simple and very effective ways uh, to detoxify, and they really relate to the, the, uh, the environmental toxins that are around us all the time now. Another therapy that can be very helpful and very healing 
and healthy for you to do is massage therapy. Uh, the advantage of massage therapy is that it mobilizes the toxins that are stored deep in the muscles and in the lymphatics. Uh, the lymphatics are an extremely important part of the circulation that helps mobilize and get toxins out of the body and transports them through the bloodstream to the kidney or to the intestinal tract or to the skin and to the liver for detoxification. If we cleanse the liver, we have a good chance of cleaning the entire body on the inside. This is Dr. Parcells' liver cleanse. She says that we're to mix together four ounces of grapefruit juice and four ounces of extra virgin olive oil to form an emulsion and drink that. And then we're to lie quietly on the right side for 15 to 20 minutes to avoid nausea and then drink eight ounces of grapefruit juice. And then lie on our right side again and go to sleep. The next morning, we'll be very surprised about what comes out of the liver and gallbladder. Uh, tiny green pellets and in some cases not so tiny. And the, this is a sign that the liver is cleansing itself. And it's a very, very good detoxification. It's been used for many, many years by Dr. Parcells' students. And you will feel very, very good after this. Uh, another very important method of detoxification is one that, that people um, react to very strangely when you mention it, and that is coffee enemas. Uh, most people don't think of coffee in terms of an enema, but a coffee enema is a very effective way to detox as well as a very effective way to stop a, uh, an allergic reaction. If done properly, a coffee enema is a very low volume enema where the coffee stays only in the sigmoid colon. The sigmoid colon is a little S-shape uh, of colon just between the rectum and the ascending colon. And if you keep the volume low, the coffee stays only in that area. And the caffeine in the coffee is the effective agent in detoxification. The caffeine goes through the intrahepatic circulation directly to the liver and causes the liver to dump the toxins it has in its ducts. It also causes the gallbladder to duct to dump, and this allows then the liver to work on new and fresh toxins uh, rather than holding on to the old toxins that it has not yet uh, excreted from its ducts. Toxins and waste products are excreted through the kidneys, so number, another very important and easy step to do is to drink a lot of water during detoxification, at least six to eight glasses of water a day. Now the type of water is very important. So what I recommend is filtered water. What I have found personally to be the best type of filtered water is one that uses a carbon block filter as opposed to a granulated carbon. Carbon block filter has the advantage of getting out all of the heavy metals, the pesticides, the inorganic solvents, any bacteria, any viruses, any parasites, but it allows the important minerals through. So again, drinking at least six to eight glasses of filtered water a day are extremely important in detoxification. The use of oxygen is another very important way to detoxify. Um, there are things that you can do with oxygen to help yourself, um, but there are also methods of using oxygen that require the help of a physician. For example, the use of organic germanium, um, which you can obtain from a physician and uh, from some supplemental companies. Uh, increases the oxygen utilization in the body um, and this helps with the detoxification procedures uh, as well as helping to strengthen the immune system. Uh, the use of a stabilized oxygen products such as Aerobic 07 also increases oxygenation in the body on a cellular level. Um, the use of stabilized oxygen has several benefits. For example, um, just a few drops in water it serves as a germicide it will kill organisms that are in the water. If you increase the amount of the stabilized oxygen in the water, it then serves as an, a cellular oxygenator. And these are things that you can do without the help of a physician. Um, the use of hydrogen peroxide is another way of increasing oxygenation. Uh, you should always use food grade hydrogen peroxide, which is 35% hydrogen peroxide, which you will then dilute down to three or 6% before you use. This helps to detoxify the body, increases the oxygenation. Increasing the oxygenation seems to help drive the detox um, reactions in the body, the detoxification um, 
chemical processes in the body. The ability of any organ or gland to do its job is uh, contingent on the cells within that organ or gland receiving proper nutrition and oxygenation on the incoming side and then the elimination of toxins and metabolic byproducts on the outgoing side. So the, the, it is the lymph that carries away the waste products. The lymph is literally the sewage system of the body. And so when you're using the breath uh, purposefully, whether you're doing some kind of a breath practice or whether you just remember to take a deep breath now and then, go ahead, take one now. Every time you remember to take a deep breath, you are detoxifying because basically you've accelerated the rate at which the lymphatic fluid is carrying the toxic uh, toxins or metabolic byproducts out of the organs and glands. And remember, every organ and every gland is going to be the most effective at its job, whatever that job is, if it's operating in a clear rather than a toxic environment. Let's just look at a couple of practices that are very simple to do that you can do, uh, frankly, without even leaving your chair. The first one is called the front-back bending method, and it goes like this. Uh, I'll do a few, and you can join me. That is the breathing in. And that is the exhaling. Breathing in. And exhaling. Each time you take a depth breath in like that, you are pumping the lymphatic system through the contraction of the diaphragm. And then when you exhale and press like this, you are pumping the lymph again because of the contraction of the muscles. One more. When, you do, when you're doing this practice, you are actually using probably the most highly refined, uh, well thought out breath practice for detoxification that exists. Because you are not only uh, getting plenty of fresh air, which is then available to le go into the blood and then from the blood into the tissues, but you're also in the process of pumping the lymphatic system in the, probably a more uh, profound and effective method than has ever been developed in any way. Uh, acupuncture, as many of you will be aware of, is an ancient Chinese technique uh, that's probably over 5,000 years old and has remained relatively unchanged as far as restoring balance and harmony within the body. The body is a microcosm of the universe. Uh, the symbol of acupuncture is the yin-yang symbol, which is a circle that has a black teardrop in it with a white dot, followed by a white teardrop with a black dot. This is a representation of both the individual as well as the universe. And the concept is, is that we are made up of half light and half dark and within all light is the element of darkness, and within all darkness is the seed of light. So from the Oriental standpoint, the concept of acupuncture and of health in general is a harmonious balance of forces within the body in addition to a harmonious balance of that individual with his environment. The imbalances caused by these toxins are what interrupt the flow of chi in the meridians. And it's kind of like having a dead battery. You can jump start a, a car by taking the energy from another battery to get the car running. That doesn't necessarily solve your long-term problems, but it does help in getting you back to where your body starts healing itself. And in the final analysis, we are our own physicians. Your doctor will only help you to help yourself. You can't expect either a surgeon or an acupuncturist or a chiropractor or whatever. We can't force good health on you. It has to do with you changing diet, 
changing your lifestyle, changing your exercise regimen, changing the way you lift things and the way you do things. And all these factors are what create your net health. And acupuncture can help that in the fact that it can restore the flow of chi and bypass these obstacles until the detoxification process clears them out of your system and restores the normal flow of chi. Reiki is a form of moving energy in parts of the body that are holding on block, blocking the energy flow from healing parts of the body that a person may be stuck in certain uh, stress. They may be having stress, so they hold the, the block in, the, in that place. And then when I am performing the Reiki on them, whether it be a shoulder that they're blocking, or it could be in their feet, or in their head receiving stress and the headaches, um, what I do is I can feel with my hands the heat from those places but I I will go back to those specifically I start at the top I start with the eyes I move to the ears the back of the head and the throat and then the chakras all down the body when I place my hands either on them or above them what it's doing is it's moving and unblocking certain parts of their body that are holding the energy. And as I'm moving along, I feel parts of the body that have, are holding more heat than others. And I can tell that that part of the body needs to be balanced more than, say, a part of the body that I, as I get down to maybe uh, the legs, that part of the body may be in perfect balance. So I don't have to spend as much time there as I would, say, as maybe on the feet, because some people have a lot of problems with the feet, or the throat, the chakra in the throat. I might have to spend more time unblocking the throat, because people seem to have more problems with speaking their own truths, and they hold that in. Another thing that people do not ordinarily think of as a toxin is uh, emotional aspects. Uh, particularly abuse can be a toxin. For example, there's physical abuse, emotional abuse, uh, sexual abuse. All of these can be considered an emotional toxin. And emotional toxins have to be cleared just like chemical or physical toxins have to be. Uh, if a person does not deal with the damage caused from these negative emotional experiences, it can affect their body just, adver just as adversely as a chemical toxin can. And finally, one last thing that, that, that we can consider a toxin, although there are probably many others I could discuss, uh, cumulative life experiences can be considered a toxin. They're more like an emotional toxin. We are all the sum of everything we have been exposed to and everything we have done in our lifetimes. And for people who've had very difficult lives, um, either emotionally or biochemically or from exposures they've had, they have quite a heavy cumulative uh, life experience toxin. And this has to be detoxified just like any other toxin. Furthermore, we know that spiritual factors and intellectual factors, emotional factors, have a very, very profound influence on the cells of our body. And conversely, the cellular processes and the biochemical processes have a very, very profound effect on our spiritual, emotional, intellectual well-being. So start looking for toxic thoughts and toxic deeds and toxic ideals and, and toxic belief systems and, and toxic people because any of those that we allow in, now we become. So we're no longer authentic and real and natural to our real self, thinking with one mind, one heart, one soul, one spirit all integrated without conflict, living in bliss, staying clean and healthy in a toxic and polluted world. I would say of all the things that I've done with the exercise, with the juicing, with the detoxing, um, um, none of that compares to taking care of the spiritual part of you, your first um, 
obviously I couldn't do that first because it, I don't know, I'm not quite sure why. Um, I needed to do, do other things first. I needed to clean my system. So perhaps these wonderful thoughts would start to come in. It's important that a person address their emotions. There are uh, a variety of emotions that are harmful to the brain, including anger, depression, resentment. These all have an effect on the brain, literally have an effect on brain biochemistry. I believe that uh, my thoughts and my feelings create an energy, and meditation is very important for me um, to actually focus on creating more positive uh, energy in, in my physical body. Um, and in that way, uh, I can use meditation to uh, detoxify uh, those emotions and those thought patterns that I believe are, are very much a part of uh, manifesting disease in my body. In this meditation, what I do is uh, will allow people to connect and contact their, uh, their spiritual or, or their soul and uh, using a guided mes meditation to uh, allow them to expand and uh, I very much believe that uh, fear contracts um, and puts a, a, a enormous amount of stress on the physical body whereas that love is very expansive and it's, it's to uh, guide the people through releasing the tension and the stress um, and the fear that's behind it and to go into a deeper state of relaxation by connecting to their higher self and also expanding uh, their positive feelings um, out into the universe. When you go into a state of meditation, you are triggering the brain chemistry to produce a kind of neurotransmitter that is not produced when you are in a state of doing. So let's say you're driving, shopping, talking on the telephone, making decisions, going here and there. Well, then your body is producing a, an adrenaline-based neurotransmitter, and adrenaline turns off the immune system, literally turns off the immune system. When you go into this deep state of relaxation or meditation, you shift that so that the adrenaline basis is shifted and your body is now producing neurotransmitters from the healing side. And so uh, this is why the relaxation response, meditation practices from every ancient culture are so popular and important right now because we understand that meditation turns on a medicine within you. Some of the general benefits of detoxification is an improvement of mental and physical energy, more vitality and feeling more youthful, having a reduction of many of the symptoms of congestion or toxicity, such as aches and pains, headaches, allergies, skin problems, uh, digestive problems, and just a greater sense of well-being. When I have patients who follow any of my programs or the detox diet, and they come back in two or three weeks, they've, they're already so excited about the changes that they've made and the kind of feedback they're getting from friends and family on how they look and feel that they're often inspiring and motivating other people to go on a similar kind of program. No matter what any of these so-called experts say about detoxification, nothing equals the personal stories of the people who've gone through a detoxification program. Let's hear from the real experts. Before I started the uh, detox program, I had literally crippling arthritis. I had chronic sinusitis. I had a serious heart ailment. I had asthma bordering at times on emphysema. I had been a chain cigar smoker for 60 years. I'd been a heavy drinker. I was very depressed. Would I be alive today if I had not gone through the cleansing program? Uh, not only do I doubt it, but I can state with uh, certainty that uh, I would have long been gone. And incidentally, 
while working with you, I lost two brothers who were both younger than me, and one a physician, uh, and who did not uh, smoke and who did not drink and so forth. You know, we take so much care of our outsides with, with creams and shampoos and, and masks and, and clothes and, and all the trappings. And we don't, we don't take care of the inside. And um, that's where it all starts. So I, I think all of us could uh, do a good service to ourselves and our fellow man <laughs> and woman by keeping ourselves clean, you know, and keeping our minds healthy as well as our bodies. You know, I'm not walking around after a meal sluggish. Um, I'm, I'm energetic and, uh, and I'm, fe I'm feeling good, I'm just about the best that I've felt in a long time. Living in the area of comfort, living as I had always lived, living doing the things I had always done, it's almost as if you were in a prison as I now see it. Having broken those bounds, uh, it's as if life has opened up uh, to me. I, I see so much more. I, I am less threatened by things that are new and challenging. I rather enjoy the challenges that, uh, more so than I used to. Letting go of things is the way you grow. You have to let go of things in order to, to take new things into your life. life is a gift. It's a treasure. We, this is not a dress rehearsal. We get one shot at it. And we've got to make the best we can. And this is a great way to get the most out of yourself and to help the people you love by doing this because they're going to see you grow and change. And you're going to be able to benefit the people you love and strangers like you guys I'm talking to. It's great. Go for it. I hope this has given you some insights into a major problem not yet recognized and not yet treated by mainstream medicine. But hopefully this time, we won't have to wait like we did with Gulf War Syndrome for seven years, with uh, the Agent Orange fiasco of the Vietnam era for 20 years, with chronic fatigue syndrome for another 10 years, and hypoglycemia for almost 30 years. We begin to see that people are toxic, we can stop it, and we can reverse it. I'm Gary Nall. Thank you very much for joining us.